Hello, my name is Nathan Rainey, and I am here today to present the REST API, and then also containers. This is uh, for the Slurm user group meeting 2021, since it has to be remote this year. And this is where we are in the agenda. You just heard from Jason, and then I'm going to talk about REST, and then Marshall's going to go and discuss burst buffer. Um, there are five separate presentations, and please make sure to tune in the YouTube and the link provided. Uh, everyone is welcome to ask questions on YouTube chat. Chat will be moderated, and then I will get the relayed questions at the very end, and I will try to answer them as best as possible. All right, now for the REST API, and then some, and then also some containers. So I'll be covering what is the REST API and Open API, just briefly, because I have presented this before in detail. And then I'll discuss the changes in Slurm 2011, and then the changes in Slurm 2108. And then I'll be discussing the new feature of S account, SQ, and S info, being able to do JSON and YAML. And then I'll try to give some more details on the JSON web tokens for authentication. And then we'll cover containers, and then a brief uh, reminder about scale out. I have a lot of stuff to cover, so I'm going to go pretty quick. All right. First of all, what is the REST API? It's not much different than a web server, except for in this case, it talks to Slurm instead of, say, Apache or Nginx. Uh, the Slurm REST API attempts to be as open API compliant as possible, so that any client who that is open API uh, compatible can connect to the Slurm REST API and use it cleanly. All right. So here's some example uh, architecture setups that sites could run. This one is using the JSON web tokens to clients that are outside of the cluster network. And the clients will have them directly. And they just talk directly to Slurm SD, and Slurm SD will translate to the other. Uh, demons, some control D and some DVD. This one's a little bit more interesting. Uh, this is where a site will have an authenticating web proxy that sits between the users and Slurm SD. This allows a site to actually implement their own authentication system. So a radius server or some common AD server, something like that. And that way the clients can authenticate to that and still talk to Slurm SD, making it easier as I assume most sites have their own authentication set up and don't directly want to use ours unless they need to. There's also the possibility of doing local authentication, which uses a feature in the, Slurm, uh, the Linux kernel to verify that the user is correct, and the commands are then sent along as needed. This allows sites to pipe uh, REST commands via shell scripts or some kind of workflow manager directly and avoids the need for a central Slurm SD sitting on a managed server. All right, now for the changes in 2011. Uh, the big change to us is that we added the output from Slurm DBD. The build, <coughs> this includes the ability to update, query, and load from the same, as long as it's from the same plugin version, accounts, associations, clusters, jobs, quas, uh, trez can only be dumped because the trez IDs can't change. Uh, users and WC keys, and then diag because it doesn't make sense to load a diag output. Um, the, the relevant command that they more or less uh, mimic is given here on the slides. Um, minor note, converting from Slurm's internal format to JSON or YAML has a massive expansion ratio, and the results can be very large, um, so please be prepared for that. Next change, um, we do actually test against the Open API generator uh, in 2011 and made sure that our compatibility works. Now we did Open API generator just because it was one of the popular ones. In general, we expect that any of the Open API clients can function with Slurm, and if it doesn't, uh, please give us a bug. And I will note that v5 of the open API generator makes breaking changes for any code that's written for the v4, <clears throat> at least with Python, and that should be noted. 
Although that has that is independent of Slurm's implementation. Uh, in in order to make life easier for everyone, we've also generated the Open API documentation and present put it on our website so everybody can just view it without having to go and generate the Open API generation, Open API documentation directly. Although that's still an option, but this should just be easier. Now for the changes in Slurm 2108. Oh, uh, we found that as we make changes to the REST API, it's harder for uh, client developers to keep track of what we've changed. Uh, doing a JSON diff isn't nearly as useful, even if you use a tree mode uh, compatible viewer. So we've now made a release notes page that actually details what section has changed inside of the open API specification that we provide. Hopefully this will make it much easier because the site can just go and look, Hey, this changed and I go and update the client this way. And we will be maintaining this and it's even has all previous changes to it from the initial release. Hopefully that makes everyone's life a little easier when they have to update. Uh, other minor change is many of the queries now allow you to provide update time so that you can tell if anything's changed between the last update and you can just simply ignore it until it has an actual change. We've also added the ability to dump reservations and the information of that. And I also like to make special note that we have tagged the V0.035 plugin as depreciated. It has not been removed yet and it will be removed in 2205. So please make sure to upgrade your clients to use at least 3.6 or 3.7. Um, as always, I suggest using the latest plugin because it gives you the most time possible without having to update unless you want a new feature, of course. All right. So this is a new feature for 22, uh, 2108, and this is the outputting of JSON or YAML directly from S account, S info or SQ. Um, we have taken the plugins inside of some SD and move them to a common location, allowing uh, these three commands currently, but more may come later, to dump the outputs directly, avoiding using LearnSD entirely to get this information. Um, minor notes for S account and the other ones, if you provide formatting options, they will be ignored currently. Uh, it doesn't really make much sense since it is JSON or YAML, and you can easily ignore what you don't want to read. Next is uh, JSON Web Token Authentication. Uh, in 2011, we added the ability to query uh, Slurm DBD. This is this was required in order to do the Slurm DBD query dumps that I noted previously. The minor change of this is that there's a new auth alt parameters where a site will be re required to set where they put the JWT key because it was previously defaulted to the state save location, but that location doesn't necessarily exist on the server that is hosting Slurm DBD. This just allows you to set it where you want. I generally put it in uh, Etsy Slurm with the correct permission so nobody can read it but the Slurm demons. Uh, another feature for 2011 is we gave the ability to disable allowing users to generate their own tokens. This allows a site to generate the tokens themselves in a controlled manner and apply any site rules that they wish. And we've also documented examples of how to generate tokens outside of um, uh, Slurm directly because it's all standards based. And then 2108, we added support for RS-256 tokens, which uh, notably use in Amazon Cognito, but it can be used in many other places or generated directly by sites. And this doesn't require that the private ADIP AES key be uh, shared between the hosts. It's a lot less trust if a site wishes for that. <clears throat> now for the uh, one of the new features for 2008, uh, OCI container support. Now I want to make sure that everyone understands that this is a technical preview and we are um, very happy to take feedback and RFEs, but everyone should note that this is definitely uh, subject to change as we continue testing. <clears throat> uh, 
Uh, so with that warning, I will go into it. So uh, the word container has become quite ambiguous as of late. So this is specifically the OPA Container Initiative, otherwise known as OCI containers, which follow a very um, strict set of standards. And I provide the link here. And you can actually look at the entire specification. There's several of them. Um, most of them that we'll be covering are the image specification and the runtime specification. Uh, the Slurm documentation has also been updated directly so that if you go to the Slurm containers page, there are examples, hopefully definitions and other things that might help remove confusion. And as always, please give us comments if there is confusion, definitely bugs, opened, you know, it doesn't work or if you need help. I want to make a very uh, specific note here that this is entirely independent of the job underscore container slash tempfs plugin. And whilst they can work together, it, I don't see how that would ever be useful for a site. But they are completely different. All right. So now Slurm supports the ability to execute OCI containers via OCI runtimes. Um, now, OCI runtimes are the application that actually starts and loads the container. OCI container is a very specific image that gets loaded. And everything here has very specific rules. It was all originally developed by Docker, but it has since um, became quite popular and, and many things actually run it, including Kubernetes, uh, and OpenShift. All right. So Slurm currently only supports the rootless uh, containers. Now this isn't much of a problem as long as you're on a new kernel. Um, only thing that really only seems to uh, remove the ability to use is networking controls. So you will be limited to using the host network. So no different than running a normal application. You just don't get any special networking roles. Uh, and I will note here that there are already existing solutions for doing this that you could have used with Slurm, such as Singularity or Charlie Cloud or SARS. Um, SARS being notable as it already uses Run C, which is the definitive <clears throat> example provided by the container OCI people. All right. So sbatch, salloc, and srun now have the dash dash container added. Uh, this is notable as before plugins used to have to find a way to add this either via environment or a either via environment or via a spank environment or something along those lines or spake argument this avoids the need and also makes it a first class citizen so if a container request is provided it'll now show up in s control commands s account it's logged all over the place it's a now full Fully supported feature if a container is requested. Um, since these are rootless containers and have no special permissions, the existing C groups uh, will now apply to them also. So sites can continue to limit to cores or limit the amount of memory used. Everything that previously applied still applies. We're not breaking any of that. There's no escaping the uh, limitations by the users if they activate the container modes. As I said before, this is all done thanks to uh, kernel support. And it's pretty easy to test if your kernel has it. And that's provided in the container documentation. The other thing to note here is there is now the new oci.conf uh, configuration file. So if this file is not populated or doesn't exist at all, dash dash container only acts as a suggestion and is recorded and provides a single environment variable. It does nothing else. This makes sure that sites who don't wish to implement it and continue using existing solutions will not be affected. Um, of course, developers of plugins and other container solutions are highly suggested to use it and plug into the system. The OCI.conf uh, has quite a few parameters that a site can use, and then they can pr proceed to use any actual OCI runtime that they wish. Slurm doesn't actually have a preferred runtime and is meant to be quite universal. So now uh, providing examples. 
First one here is S run. And I just have a CentOS 8 container that's just sitting in temp that's been prepared. And my box, which I implemented this on, was it just an Ubuntu box. So the fact that it returns CentOS Linux means it's working. Same with S alloc. The job gets granted. Um, and then it's inside the container. Uh, I will note that um, there are limitations of running containers in rootless mode, and sometimes the kernel will not allow certain operations. For instance, this one, um, it didn't allow modifying the terminal process. And you get an error here. As far as I can tell, that doesn't actually have any functional damage because Slurm will still clean up everything after. And here's an sbatch example. Same thing. Um, you're just getting CentOS on a Ubuntu machine. Um, here's some special requirements for the images. They must be standards compliant OCI images. Uh, the standard is not very difficult, although it can become quite complex if sites are using multiple overlays. Um, for the most part, I expect everyone to use a tool and not do that by hand, in which case it shouldn't be too much of an issue. Uh, Slurm currently assumes that the container images are visible on the Submission host and the execution host. This is very important. Slurm does not currently copy or mount any of the images directly from the submission host. So if users have a shared file system and they put the images on there, everything should be fine. They just need to be aware of that. Um, the container image structure is pretty simple. There's always a config.json in the root directory of it. Provides all the information that Slurm needs, and Slurm will actually load and read it and do some minor checks. Slurm will then proceed to take that information, copy it into a spool directory, modify it as required to get the container to actually run, and as a bonus, allows the site or a user to run multiple containers of the same directory, same image, at the same time without uh, affecting each other. And the final note, um, everyone's welcome to try scale out. I have a link here. We use it for training, but sites are definitely welcome to use it outside of that. And we've recently added a new cloud feature so you can start it up and actually test how cloud nodes can go up and down without actually having to pay for using cloud resources. All right, now for questions. Let me see if anybody gave us some. First question is, what is the use case for containers in this case? Um, the use case is that it should make it slightly easier for your users to actually call the containers. And I'd hope that the users would have their own reasons for calling the containers. If there are any other questions. So next question is, is there a plan for Slurm SD to get expanded? The current API is missing a few pieces of information. For example, Slurm control D get nodes does not return how many cores are allocated or how much memory is in use. Um, hmm, let's see. AR fees are always welcome. And that is correct. The Slurm Control D doesn't actually tell you the current usages. Um, that'd be the equivalent of calling the SS stat, S stat command, which we don't currently implement. However, I will note that if you look at the Slurm DBD um, command, you can actually see how much memory was used by the jobs. But I admit that's not by node. So I look, uh, please submit RFEs. <laughs> it's always, you know. We can always add more functionality to uh, Slurm SD. All right, next one is options exist or plan to blacklist JWTs. Um, not currently. The hope is, is if a site requires more advanced control of the JWTs, they will disable the user ability to generate the JWTs and then use an authenticating uh, proxy that allows them to implement any site rules that they require, controlling that the JWT shared between the proxy and Slurm is a single key that is privileged. And then the site users 
can be controlled as a site wishes. But as always, RFEs are uh, suggested. Next question. Is there any way to set an upper limit to the JWT lifespan if we do not allow users to generate their own? If we do allow users to generate their own? Not currently. Um, as previously noted, if limitations wish to be applied to the existing functionality, disabling the user generation and then generating the key uh, tokens outside of Slurm is, well, will be required to get that functionality. If there's any more questions. In one instance, Slurm SD accept job for various use cases. Not sure I actually understand that question. Um, I'll skip that and get right back to it. Is there any additional documentation of running simulating scale out? Yes. Um, all sites are more than welcome to take one of our training courses where we have a very skilled instructor walk through the entire process, uh, run through examples, and explain how everything works. And sites are very much welcome to contact sales at getmd.com to discuss about how getting training. All right, back to the previous question. In one instance of Slurm SD accept jobs for various users, which we think is the uh, question. Um, yes, of course. Slurm SD is made to be multi-user or single user, depending on which authentication scheme is used. So the Slurm SD is started at the Slurm user, and listens on a local Unix socket, any user who connects to it will actually have their job submitted as them because the local authentication will know who the, the requester is because it asks the kernel and the job and any other request will look like it came from the user directly despite there only being one Slurm SD daemon on the host. Um, otherwise, Slurm SD can be in JSON web token authentication mode, at which point it only forwards the token along to either some control D or slim DVD. And it doesn't really matter um, who the user is because the token is joined with the request and it's gets sent back. So any number of users can use it. Made to be definitely multi-user. All right, looks like we're out of time. Uh, thank you for listening. I hope that everyone had their questions answered, and I look forward to RFEs and other bugs getting submitted with additional questions or issues. Thank you. And of course, the next session will be with Marshall. He will be discussing Burst Buffer and Storm Script D. It starts at 10.30 Mountain Time, and you'll have to reconnect to a separate YouTube live stream. Thank you.